and explosions lit up in the sky over Gaza as Israeli forces continued their bombardment of the enclave. After the collapse of a week-long ceasefire on December 1st, Tel Aviv began a ground offensive in southern Gaza last week. Israel has since pushed from the east into the heart of the city of Khan Yunis, with warplanes attacking an area to the west. Israeli airstrikes poured down on Gaza's largest southern city overnight. Deadly clashes and bombing shook central and northern urban areas. The Israeli police on Monday reported multiple impact sites of rocket fragments in Holon on the edge of Tel Aviv. They said one civilian was lightly wounded. A video released by the Israeli army claimed to show weapons inside a mosque in Jabalaya in northern Gaza. אנחנו מגיעים פה לקומה השלישית, איפה שנכנסנו פה לחדרים, מצאנו ממש כאן מרחב אימונים של הארגון, נשקים, מחשב עם תוכנית אימונים ומקרן כדי לעשות כל מיני סיטואציות ולהתאמן. הרבה מאוד אמצעים אלקטרונים שפה החמאס מתאמן ומכין את המחבלים. בצד השני, בחדר השני, מעבדת אמל"ח. מצאנו מעבדת מטענים, ממש מעל התעתף, סוללות, הכל. זה מה שיש בתוך המסגדים פה, זה מה שיש בכל מסגד ומסגד שאנחנו נכנסים אליו. The White House expressed concern over reports that Israel used US supplied white phosphorus in attacks on Lebanon, adding it was seeking more details. Lebanon accused Israel of repeatedly using the incendiary weapon in October. The Washington Post said analysis of shell fragments from one attack showed the rounds were US made. Well, for more on this, we're joined by our correspondent Jody Cohen from Rana. Jody, many thanks for your time this morning. And what can you tell us about that potential use of white phosphorus? Hi, Oliver. Yes, so the Washington Post reported that Israel used white phosphorus supplied by the U.S. in a strike in southern Lebanon. Now, according to international law, white phosphorus is allowed to be used in certain circumstances, and the IDF says that it only uses legal weaponry, and its choice of whether or not to use white phosphorus is dependent on operational considerations and also availability of alternatives. Now, they say that they use white phosphorus only as a smoke screen and not to attack and say that the IDF rules are actually stricter than international law and they only use it in limited circumstances when the Supreme Court allow it. Now this took place in Lebanon and we've seen an increase of rockets fired from Lebanon into Israel and War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz had a call with US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and he said that Israel will need to remove the threat posed by posed by Hezbollah on its northern border. We're also seeing more attacks on shipping by another Iranian proxy, the Houthis in Yemen. But meanwhile, of course, the main fighting is taking place in Gaza. And um, they're still holding 138 hostages there, including two babies, dozens of women and several elderly people. And according to a Channel 12 media report, an anonymous source has cautiously suggested the start of negotiations on another temporary truce and partial hostage release deal. This is yet to be confirmed and it remains to be seen if that happens. Of course, there are increasing calls for that ceasefire at the UN, as well as increased calls for aid to the Gazans. What can you tell us about that? Absolutely. So the UN General Assembly is holding a vote on Tuesday calling for a ceasefire. This is non-binding. Remember, the US and UK didn't support the UN Security Council resolution um, that was voted on a couple of days ago. That's because it didn't condemn Hamas or acknowledge Israel's right to defend itself. Now, Israel says that a ceasefire would be a surrender to Hamas, that it would keep them in place and enable them to carry out what it did on the 7th of October including killing 1,200 people, kidnapping 240, carrying out mass rape, burning people alive, torture and beheadings. 
But the call for a ceasefire is because since the 7th of October, Gazans are also hugely suffering. So to, to enable more aid to get to the Gazans, Israel has opened the Keren Shalom crossing, doubling its inspection capabilities of aid going in. But transferring aid from Israel into Gaza when it's under attack by Hamas, Israel says it's a bridge too far. There is a bottleneck at the Rafah crossing for aid going in from the Egyptian border into Gaza. And Israel has called on UN agencies to speed up the transfer of aid to the people there and also to stop Hamas from stealing the aid. But to help Gazans, Israeli ambassador to the UN, Gilad Eridan, said that rather than calling for a ceasefire, countries should be calling for Hamas to release the hostages and to surrender to end this war quickly.